Netflix's That 90s Show is a true-to-form sitcom revival aimed at nostalgic millennials and their 90s-loving teens. While there's no thorny plot to untangle, there's still plenty of groovy allusions to That 70s Show to unpack. What made that 70s show so special was the chemistry between the ensemble cast, unknown actors who were launched into stardom thanks to their time on the show. Their dynamic worked so well that it was essentially replicated for the new generation of teens in that 90s show. In episode 1, that 90s pilot, Topher Grace and Laura Prepon reprised their roles as Eric and Donna. Now parents to 14-year-old Leah and living in Chicago, Donna is a published author, and Eric teaches a college course about the religion of Star Wars, both fitting career paths for the two lovebirds. Their supportive parenting styles also go hand in hand. Donna is proud of her daughter and encourages her to find herself, while Eric has a harder time letting go of his little girl. Listen, pal, in the space of one day, you've gotten pierced, you've gotten beer, and you've gotten extremely snippy. Real-life couple Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are also back reprising their roles of Kelso and Jackie, whose son Jay befriends Leia. The two are preparing for their second remarriage. Wilmer Valderrama is also back as Fez, who is revealed to be kooky next-door neighbor Sherry's love interest in Episode 2, Free Leia. As for Danny Masterson, his character Hyde is ignored due to Masterson's public legal trouble. Two more familiar faces from the original cast have reprised their roles as recurring characters in that 90s show, and their presence makes us feel right at home. One of the best grumpy sunshine duos in sitcom history, Red and Kitty Foreman are leading characters just as much as their teenage counterparts, if not more. Instead of being thrown into a sequel with an all-new cast, Red and Kitty ground us in the familiar. Red is still putting his foot in people's asses, and Kitty is still ensuring the kids are well-fed. They were the parents who shaped a generation, and now they're the grandparents for a new generation. The original teens, now adults, look back at their teenhood in the Foreman house with fondness, while the new teens feel welcomed instantly. In Episode 2, Free Leia, one of the kids, Nate, feels comfortable enough to ask Red for one of his hip flannels from his vast collection. It's the 90s, after all. Red turns him away, but don't be fooled by his hard exterior. By the end of the episode, Red makes a silent gesture by leaving a flannel for Nate in his van. Can I call you Uncle Red? Get out. In episode 5, Step by Step, another kid, Ozzy, helps Kitty set up her new computer, hoping they'll form a bond strong enough for Kitty to accept Ozzy's coming out announcement. It's no surprise that Kitty embraces him with open arms. Meet the newest foreman, Leia. If you haven't already picked up on it yet, yes, she was named after Princess Leia, thanks to Eric's Star Wars obsession. She's a straight-edged, insecure teen ready to make the most out of her life. She's tired of being an unpopular debate nerd and wants to spend the summer cultivating the same experiences her parents fondly reminisce about. Instead, Eric is eager for her to join him during a summer-long space camp. It seems as though there's no way of getting out of it until she meets rebellious riot girl Gwen, who acts as a catalyst for Leia. After some convincing, Leia is granted permission to stay with her grandparents for the summer, where Gwen will introduce her to a new group of friends. Leia desperately wants to fit in. In her eyes, these cool and experienced teens won't want anything to do with her when they realize she's a fraud. In Episode 2, Free Leia, after failing to host a fun movie night, Leia lets her insecurities get the best of her. Gwen reassures Leia that her friends aren't interested in how cool or uncool she is and would rather she be her most authentic self. By Episode 3, Lip Smackers, Leia gains enough confidence to initiate her first kiss, a big step towards Leia becoming comfortable in her own skin. In Episode 1, that 90s pilot, Leia may not know it yet, but friendship will become her biggest confidence booster. Everything changes when Gwen introduces Leia to her dim-witted but kind-hearted brother Nate, his girlfriend Nikki, the sarcastic, quick-witted Ozzy, and Leia's flirty love interest, Jay. Each of these characters somewhat follow the archetypes of the original personalities. Gwen takes on aspects of Donna and Hyde's personalities, Nate and Jay are both reminiscent of Kelso, Nikki will remind you of Jackie, Ozzy is the new Fez, and Leia obviously takes after her father. History is repeating itself, 
which will either feel comforting for some or lazily repetitive for others, depending on the viewer. As the series' tagline states, times change, teenagers don't. Although Leia may be the new kid on the block, everyone in the group is still getting to know each other. Nate and Jay are already the closest out of everyone, swapping cologne and sharing ice cream cones. Gwyn and Nikki bond for the first time in Episode 5, Step by Step, when they're left alone with each other. In Episode 8, Summer Storm, Gwyn and Nate grow closer as siblings when they open up about missing their dads. By the season finale, the teens are closer than ever. Set in 1995, that 90s show takes place 15 years after the 2006 finale of that 70s show, when the teens rang in the new decade of the 80s. When that 70s show premiered to audiences in 1998, many viewers were reliving their teenhood from the late 70s, while teens of the 90s were fascinated by the novelty of the time period. With the perfect 15-year time jump, new and old audiences can enjoy the sequel in the same way. Like the original, that 90s show captures its time period's culture using references to fashion, music, and historical events, as well as tackling timely social issues in some of the episode's storylines. Some references sprinkled into the show include Gwen's interest in the Riot Girl movement, Leia's favorite movie Free Willy, and a Beverly Hills 90210-themed episode where Brian Austin Green makes a cameo. No one came to watch me DJ at the Peach Pit. <laughs> Not even Donna Martin. It's the worst. The teens also spend some time at a video rental store, a rave, and a bustling mall. While all this may seem normal to millennial viewers, Gen Z likely regards these as retro references, at least the ones that don't fly right over their heads. It wouldn't be a teen sitcom without romance, and for better or worse, season one of that 90s show spends a big chunk of its runtime on the budding relationship between Leia and Jay. Right away, Jay is introduced as the smooth-talking flirt who takes a liking to Leia. Like the good friend she is, Gwen warns Leia about Jay's reputation as a player. But when Jay turns down Leia's attempt to kiss him in Episode 3, Lip Smackers, Leia can't help but obsess over Jay's comments about how he wants their relationship to be more than just a meaningless hookup. The two go back and forth in the following episode, refusing to be the first to make a move despite already knowing their feelings for each other. It's typical teen relationship drama that leaves them in a fight at the end of the episode. But don't worry, the two make up by Episode 6 and officially start dating. Too bad we only have four more episodes before the summer ends. Fast forward to the Season 1 finale, and Jay is ready to break things off, not wanting to try long distance. During a vulnerable moment, Leia and Nate open up to each other about heartbreak and love, a conversation that almost ends with a kiss. Adolescence, identity, and coming of age are major themes throughout that 90s show. The teens are rebelling, trying new things, and figuring themselves out along the way. Remind you of anyone? Of course, these are the growing pains of every generation. And if there's one guarantee in any of this, it's that mistakes will be made. In Episode 4, Rave, Leia tells her first big lie by tricking her grandparents into thinking she's going to see a movie when she's really sneaking off to a rave. She's caught at the end and taught a lesson about taking advantage of trust and love. But how often do teens learn their lesson the first time? In Episode 7, Boyfriend Day 1, Jay, Leia, and Gwen pick up a drugged kitty from her dentist appointment, despite Red's strict demands that Leia and Jay keep away from each other. While trying to prove how responsible they can be, they take a detour to a tattoo shop where Kitty ends up getting some new ink. Cue the thing about trust and love again. However, the biggest lesson Leia learns this summer happens in Episode 6, The Birthday Girl, when Red pulls her aside during her birthday party and initiates a heart-to-heart. Leia comes clean about what's been bothering her. She feels as though she has no idea what she's doing and keeps messing everything up. At that moment, Red bestows upon her wisdom that encapsulates the whole show. We're all just making it up as we go along. Something unique about that 90s show that sets it apart from other teen sitcoms is its inclusion of the parents' perspective. Rarely do teen shows take an empathetic approach towards parental figures by showcasing healthy parent-child relationships. In that 90s show, these relationships are more than just mother, father, and child. While Leia is under the guardianship of her grandparents for the summer, they take on the roles of caregiver and supporter. Red and Kitty are protective of Leia, but trust her enough to make her own decisions. Episode 8, Summer Storm, 
highlights a different yet very common kind of parental relationship. Sherry is the single mother of Gwen and Nate, half-siblings with different fathers. Gwen and Nate don't always see eye to eye, but during a touching moment, the siblings open up about missing their fathers. Kitty joins in, revealing a peek into her own daddy issues. In Episode 7, Boyfriend Day 1, Sherry's paternal angst is also revealed when Red starts reminding her of her father. In a rare sweet Red moment, he even offers to help Sherry learn how to ride a bike, something her father never did for her. That 90s show feels like one big throwback, from its 90s-era nostalgia to its not-so-subtle nods to the original. Even if you've never seen that 70s show, it's possible to watch this new iteration and enjoy it. However, most of the fun comes from picking up on all the That 70s Show easter eggs. With fond memories of the original, significant moments pack an even greater punch, like when Red gifts Leia the Vista Cruiser, or when the new teens reenact the memorable smoke circle scenes. How many times do you turn 15 in your life? Not that many. Memorable catchphrases like Red's foot in the ass and Kelso's damn Jackie are all the more funny. The Foreman house we know and love is untouched, from its dusty basement couch to the kitchen knickknacks. Even the transitions between scenes take after the style of the original. Even if you're just looking for a trip down memory lane, that 90s show is worth a watch. Season 1 ends with a finale entitled Kids in America. Granted, a song that technically came out in the 1980s, but a 90s anthem nonetheless. Summer is coming to an end, and to make things worse, Jay breaks up with Leia causing Gwen and Leia to fight. Now, Leia can't get out of Point Place fast enough. Kitty tries everything she can to remind Leia of the good times to ensure she returns next summer. In the end, Gwen and Leia make up, and Jay asks Leia to give him another chance. But Leia has mixed feelings after almost kissing Nate, setting us up for a juicy Season 2 love triangle. For now, we're left with Leia saying her goodbyes. As of the Season 1 premiere, Netflix has yet to announce a renewal for Season 2, but with mostly positive reviews so far, there's still a good chance that we'll return to Point Place for the summer of 96.